so I was almost able to squeeze all the notes into the last video, but there were a few slides left, so I hate starting in the middle of a topic, so I'm just going to start back with patterns of chemicals of reactions. So we have synthesis reactions or combination reaction where we're actually making something, you're synthesizing it, syn, remember, means together. Decomposition, think rotting bodies, you're breaking uh, larger molecules apart. And exchange reactions are kind of self-explanatory. So synthesis reactions, we've got A, we've got B, and then we've got AB. So we're taking small molecules or atoms, and we're combining them to form larger, more complex ones. This is anabolic, like I said before, think of anthill. Ants work together to make a large anthill. So this always involves bond formation. Example of this, I uh, think dehydration synthesis, where you have amino acid molecules and you form peptide bonds and form a long chain or a polypeptide that's going to become a protein. Decomposition, now we're starting with a larger molecule and breaking it down into smaller molecules. Um, it's the exact opposite of a synthesis reaction. Of course, now we're breaking bonds. These are catabolic. Remember, I told you all the story. Uh, think cats destroy things, right? So you're actually breaking things down. Uh, decomposition reaction. Remember, we store glycogen in our liver. Um, and whenever our glucose levels get low, we can actually break down that glycogen. So we're starting with a larger molecule and we're breaking it down into individual glucose molecules. In an exchange reaction, we're gonna have both bonds being made and bonds breaking. So we have both synthesis occurring and decomposition. Um, so another term for them is going to be called a displacement reaction. Still have the same things, they're just getting moved around a little bit. So an example of an exchange reaction we have ATP, adenosine triphosphate, and glucose, and we can actually form ADP, so adenosine diphosphate, so we're breaking off that last phosphate bond, and we're gonna add it on to glucose, so now we have glucose phosphate. So we have a bond breaking and a bond being made. Uh, oxidation reaction, reduction reactions, or redox reactions, so you remember them from chemistry. These are decomposition reactions. Um, these are the reactions in which food fuels are broken down for energy. So um, we're also um, looking at electrons being exchanged between the reactants. So we have one of our um, reactants will actually be an electron donor. The one that donates an electron and loses it is going to be called oxidized. The one that accepts and receives the electron is going to be reduced. So if we're looking at, we've got glucose and oxygen forming carbon dioxide, water, and ATP. So hopefully you remember this is the um, uh, chemical equation for cell respiration. Um, so in this overall process, um, glucose is gonna be oxidized and oxygen is going to be reduced. Um, so energy flow and chemical reactions. So all chemical reactions are either going to be considered exergonic or endergonic. Think exer, ex, exit. In an exergonic reaction, you're going to be uh, having a net release of energy. Um, so that means the products have less potential energy than the reactants. And um, uh, so this is gonna be your catabolic reaction. So actually breaking things down and oxidative reactions. Endergonic reactions are going to have a net absorption of energy, so they're going to require more energy to actually take place. So the products are going to have more potential energy than the reactants, and these are going to be your anabolic reactions. Um, so reversibility of chemical reactions. All chemical reactions are theoretically reversible. If you have A and B and form AB, you can break apart AB to now form A and B. Um, a chemical equilibrium occurs if neither forward nor reverse action reaction is dominant, so that is possible for some of these. Um, but many biological reactions are pretty much irreversible in our bodies for a couple reasons. One of them is due to energy requirements because it involves so much energy to do the reverse reaction. We're just not going to be able to provide that. Or due to the removal of products. 
So an example of the removal of products would be whenever you have aerobic cell respiration, you start off with glucose and oxygen, well, your products are going to be carbon dioxide and water, which you are both excreting from your body as you exhale, you're getting rid of that carbon dioxide. And you're also getting rid of water at that same time and then also water through your urine as well. Therefore, those reactions aren't going to be reversible because you have just gotten rid of those products. Uh, rate of chemical reactions. This I know you absolutely remember from chemistry. If you increase the temperature of it, it'll increase the rate of the reaction. If you decrease the temperature, it'll decrease the rate of the reaction. If you increase the concentration of the reactant, it will increase the rate of the reaction. Um, if you decrease the particle size, that will also increase the rate of the reaction. And another way you can actually increase the rate of a reaction is by adding a catalyst. Um, so they increase the rate of reaction um, without actually being changed or being part of the product. Um, so in biology, we talk about enzymes. Enzymes are proteins that are biological catalysts. So basically, the way they speed up the rate of the reaction is by lowering the amount of energy that is going to be required. And we'll talk more about that with the biomolecules. And we're done.